Erin, welcome. Thanks for having me, Van Veen. Just give us a sense of what should businesses and governments be doing to incorporate science-based targets at the moment? Well, first off, the most important thing is that they're taking action now. Um, there are no regrets actions that companies and cities can be taking um, that are um, in line with what climate and nature is needed um, and in line with, science, with what science says. What we do at Science Based Targets Network is we provide um, companies and cities with the guidance for them to follow essentially an instruction manual for how do you comprehensively assess your impacts across um, the environment and then how do you prioritize and go ahead and move on to setting targets? And so just one example of, of a target that a, that a company might set is uh, reducing the amount of freshwater quantity in the products that they source um, and in their direct operations in line with what science says is needed in, in those places. That's great. And what was the need for, for the, the handbook effectively that yeah. people didn't always know how to begin approaching these targets? Yes, standardize the process. It does. That that's the that's the promise and the potential here because and I used to work with individual companies and, and coalitions and I found that um, um, strategies and targets were all over the map. There were um, lofty, ambitious ones, but that weren't rooted in, in practical how much by when. Um, there were incremental ones that you know you weren't sure is this enough, and so. Um, SBTN strives to equip companies to know that they're taking enough of the right actions in the right places at the right time to do their part to meet the goals of the global biodiversity framework on the side of nature and on the Paris Agreement on, on the side of climate, which is how the UN processes have organized these topics. Yeah. And tell us about nature-based solutions and the role they'll be playing. Well, for those that might have heard the buzzword nature-based solutions but not really it's gotten the their arms around <laughs> um, what it necessarily means, imagine if instead of focusing solely on greenhouse gas emissions, you're looking holistically at um, the other aspects of ensuring a, a healthy planet for people, um, um, fresh water, availability, mm -hmm. um, pollution, land, biodiversity. Um, that... If you look at that holistically, it presents a whole option set that you don't see if you're just looking at climate. And so nature-based solutions are a way for companies to both meet their net zero targets as well as um, to be doing their part to stop nature loss. And so if you imagine a company is sourcing in a basin where water pollution is a big issue, uh, they may be tempted to leave and move to another location if they're a sustainability leader, but we don't want that because worse actors may come in. And so um, instead, if they, if they look holistically, they see, oh, if we invest in restoration of the ecosystem, it will clean the water and um, we will have the benefits of better carbon capture, cleaner water, a more resilient bottom line, um, all by um, investing in nature-based solutions. That's so interesting. So there is sort of a holistic approach to these targets. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think businesses and cities really need to be doing in most urgently? What do you want them to be adopting right now? I think most urgently is, is making sure that climate and nature don't get lost on the agenda. Um, I'm, I'm glad to see here at Davos that, that the WEF has climate, nature, and energy um, as one of the four main themes, because I think with the um, geopolitical challenges and so on, um, there, there's a temptation to move away from that. But the reality is uh, the fundamental health and well-being of people and planet underpin whether or not um, the political headwinds um, continue, geo geopolitical issues, you know. And so um, don't, don't lose that big picture perspective and, and do what you know is the action that you can take now um, in order to be future-proofing your business, which is hopefully a combination of true action now as well as laying the groundwork for a longer-term transformational strategy. You mentioned political headwinds there. We have seen some governments reversing slightly on, on their climate um, promises. We've also seen ESG falling out of fashion with some businesses. Are you still optimistic that we can see the change we need to happen in, in the time frame we think we've got? Yes, I'm optimistic because I have to be. I choose, I choose to be. No, in all seriousness, in all seriousness those, um, those headwinds are significant. 
Um, I am grateful for those actors that are working on trying to po um, positively in influence them. How I can positively influence them is by focusing on what is in my control, which is making sure that what Science Based Targets Network is offering to the world is part of the solution. And, I, and so I'm excited to see that we had, we had 55 companies that wanted to be part of our first pilot. 17, wow. we had to cap it because of capacity. So we have 17, but I expect that when we open it up later this year, that will grow significantly. So I, I focus on them and the impact that they can have um, and how that paves the way longer term. Um, and that, those are the things that are in our control regardless of the way the politics go. Well, thanks for bringing us a bit of optimism there. That's Erin Billman, who's the Executive Director of the Science-Based Targets Network. And I'm Manveen Rana.